This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting, and I'm Galich Mueli. In this video, we're going to talk about communicating forecasts and maintaining a forecasting system. In the sessions thus far, we talked about the forecasting process from goal definition to system implementation. We discussed exploring the data, visualizing it, determining its patterns, and detecting exceptions. We discussed data partitioning and performance evaluations, and we learned about several popular methods for forecasting time series. The methods vary in their simplicity, in their automation, whether they're data-driven or model-driven, and more. During the entire process, we kept the deployment scenario in mind, for example, to avoid using data that's unavailable at the time of prediction. But there is one more stage that happens after the forecasting system is implemented. After the forecasts are generated, that stage is the topic of this video. Specifically, we look at communicating forecasts to stakeholders and maintaining the forecasting system over time. Presenting forecasts can be done in different formats. It can be through a written report, a website, a presentation, and more. In all cases, there are few principles that will help you present your forecasts in a clear and effective way, conveying both the certainty and uncertainty of those forecasts. As an example, consider this presentation of forecasts by Google's Insights for Search. This is no longer available, but similar Google products also provide similar charts. The chart displays the volume of search for the keyword business analytics between the years 2004 and 2011. We can easily see that year 2012 is the forecast period. Forecasts are denoted by a broken line and the background is darker. However, there are a few missing details that we would tend to include when presenting our forecasts to stakeholders. The first is the scale of the data. Without a clear y-axis scale, it's difficult to understand the magnitude of the forecasts. Secondly, although we see the point forecasts, we have no idea about their uncertainty. It's strongly advisable to also include a forecast interval. To support your scientific approach to forecasting, you should make the details of your forecasting methods available. Which methods did you use? What software did you use? This information can be placed in a footnote, in an appendix, in a link, or any other side note. Related to this, report the results of your performance evaluation. What is the expected accuracy level? Recall that forecasting methods assume that the future will be similar to the past in a probabilistic sense. Hence, you should also provide information on the conditions under which the forecasts were derived and possible factors that can affect them. For example, the forecast's search volume for business analytics might be completely wrong if a new term takes over. Lastly, in most cases, your forecast will be competing with a simpler approach that is already being used in the organization. Make sure to include this as a benchmark comparison in your charts. Presenting a time plot of your data sounds objective and innocent, but in fact, different people can come up with different narratives for the same chart. For example, you can see in this example that some people use a global trend and infer an increase while others see local decreasing trends. Whether you are a presenter or a consumer of forecasts, you should think carefully about the meaning and implications of using models with global versus local patterns. In some applications, it's useful to consider different future scenarios. For example, what if a promotion is run or what if a disease outbreak occurs? By integrating such information into our forecasting method, we can create several forecasts, one for each scenario. This is helpful to decision makers. In the example shown here, forecasts for the percentage of people sick with the flu is computed under three scenarios of the outbreak duration. The next topic is maintaining a forecasting system. In most applications, generating forecasts is not a one-time project, but rather an ongoing activity. After the initial effort of building the forecasting system, the same system can continue to produce forecasts, say, every month or every year. However, it's critically important to monitor the performance of the forecasts over time, since various circumstances might change over time. 
When there's an indication that the forecast errors are increasing or performance is getting worse, we must dedicate a special effort to redesign the forecasting model. In the example shown here, a regression model was developed in 1996 for generating quarterly forecasts. Although in 1996 the model performance seems reasonable, as we can see in the two plots, over the next years the performance deteriorated dramatically, with the model drastically over forecasting. Had we monitored this model, we might have discovered early on that there's a problem and then remodeled the data. Monitoring the forecast errors can be done using a tool from quality control called control charts. The control chart includes upper and lower control limits, which are based on the forecast error distribution. We can use the validation period forecast errors to compute, say, 5th and 95th percentiles and set those as our control limits. As new forecasts are made and new data arrives, we draw their forecast errors on the control chart. Too many points exceeding the control chart limits indicate that we should inspect our forecasting model. Written reports summarizing a forecasting effort are extremely important for several reasons. First, making the forecasting approach and technical details available to stakeholders can help address skeptics who might suspect that you have some agenda. Remember that forecasts many times have a large impact on many stakeholders and are therefore politically charged. Another reason to write a report is to avoid misuse or misunderstanding of the forecasting method or the forecasts. In many organizations, the people using the forecasts do not have formal education about forecasting. Hence, guiding them in how to read the forecasts, the prediction intervals and the charts, or any other components, can be very helpful. A professional report will typically open with a one-page executive summary. This summarizes the forecasting problem, the data used, the forecasting methods, and performance evaluation approaches, as well as it presents the forecasts and the prediction intervals, typically using a chart. The wording should be as clear and non-technical as possible. You can also mention recommendations about future use and maintenance. The second part of the report is a technical part that details the important details that a more technical reader might be interested in. Think of this as a general manual of how to replicate your results. When presenting the forecasts, if you're using charts, make sure they're well formatted and clear. The labels should be readable and the difference between the actuals and the forecasted values should be visible. If possible to use color, that's the best choice. However, if you must print out the charts in black and white, make sure to adjust the colors or replace with different line types. Another issue to consider is presentation of forecasts in tables. If you must present the forecast in a list or a table, make sure to provide only the necessary precision. Rounding might be suitable for some stakeholders, but not for others. Maintaining a forecast system means not only monitoring performance, but also recording it. Keeping records of the actual and forecasted values serves multiple purposes. First, you can monitor performance over time. To do this, you must have the forecasts, the actuals, and the forecast errors from your system. Second, the more forecast errors you have, the better you can estimate its distribution. This can help you improve the prediction intervals. Third, once you get an idea of how the forecasting system is performing over time, you'll have more information on how to improve it. For example, you might learn how the forecasting model behaves during new types of events, such as new policies. The fourth use, which is extremely important, is to be able to show stakeholders how well your forecasts are doing, as well as when they perform better or worse. The issue of recording your forecasts and errors over time is crucial for supporting your forecasting systems towards decision makers, managers, and other users of such forecasts. As I mentioned earlier, forecasts typically affect various stakeholders and are therefore quite political. It's common to see different stakeholders adjusting your forecasts, either up or down, to support their agenda. These adjustments can be for strategic reasons, for political reasons, as a compromise, or as a show of power. For example, if you're producing quarterly sales forecasts for the company, the marketing department might try to deflate your forecasts so that their efforts appear more successful in increasing the sales.
In contrast, the operations department might try to inflate the sales forecast to make sure they have sufficient inventory. Although forecast adjustments have been shown to reduce accuracy, they are unfortunately commonplace. Dealing with forecast adjustments is not easy. As the person generating the forecasts, you can try and convince the others by clarifying how you created the forecast, what data and methods you are using, and what is the expected performance. When adjustments are used, one way to try and change that practice is to compare your recorded forecasts to the adjusted ones and show management that your original forecasts, compared to the adjustments, have been more accurate. This is why keeping a record of your forecasts and the actuals is extremely important. So to summarize, the main point, first of all, is to be able to communicate the forecast that you generated very clearly. This means that when we're using charts, we want to make sure to distinguish clearly between actual and forecasted values, and of course, include both on the chart. Very advisable to use prediction intervals to convey the uncertainty associated with the forecasts. Using benchmarks is extremely important, especially if those benchmarks represent the current practice. And finally, in some cases, it's useful to show what are the forecasts under different scenarios. When we're talking about written reports, we should always include a very clear, non-technical executive summary. This executive summary should include a quick summary of all the components, but in very non-technical language. You can keep the technical details for the technical part, where you talk about the data that you've used, the models that you've implemented, and the performance. Remember to give sufficient detail that will allow someone else to reproduce your results, but not too many details. And if you have any code that you've created, you might want to share that code in some online repository. Remember to mention what were your key assumptions when you were generating and creating your forecasting model. The second topic that we discussed was about the efforts after deploying the system. And this has to do with maintenance. We talked especially about keeping records of the forecast that you generated over time, the forecast, the actual values, and the forecast errors. This can help us do a lot of important things. First of all, it helps us monitor the performance over time so that we can detect any deterioration and then fix our model. This can also help us to improve our error estimation because as we have more information about forecast errors, we can improve our prediction intervals. We can also learn how our forecasting model is working across time on different periods under different conditions, and that helps us improve our forecasting model. Finally, remember that forecasting is a political task. It is not an objective science. And therefore, being very clear about what you did and recording the results that you had retrospectively can help you gain stakeholder trust. Moreover, we talked about forecast adjustments. And to try and fight that, you can use your recorded forecasts and show management how much better your forecasts would have been compared to the adjustments. With this, we conclude our discussion of communicating and maintaining a forecasting system.